Race body work, why bother? Aside from the weight savings and removing heavy things like headlights and mirrors and all that, there are two main reasons why replacing the bodywork on a track bike may be one of the most important changes we can make. Number one is financial. Street body work is extremely expensive, and while track riding is a way to significantly reduce the risk of injury, the exposure is higher, which means there's a higher probability that we may auger in or fall. Quality race bodywork is not only lighter than street skins, but more flexible so it's less likely to shatter in a crash. Race Bodywork offers some financial protection. We have the option of selling our street bodywork to offset the cost of building our track bike, or we can save it and put the bike back into stock trim with brand new looking OEM bodywork, which makes the bike way easier to sell when we wanna to move to a different bike. But number two is being a good human. Track body work has one key feature that street body work does not. The, the belly pan is a catch base. If something goes wrong, like we forget to check the O-ring on our oil filter, a, a gasket fails or a coolant hose lets go, most of those fluids will drain into the belly pan of our bike instead of spilling all over the racetrack. I mean, I would feel terrible if an oversight on my part resulted in someone else crashing. And I guess there is a third benefit if you are a dork like me. We can paint our track bike any crazy way we want. And some of you may remember my Army Green SV650 for a can of single stage lusterless olive drab paint and some vinyl decals. I had a bike that drew a lot of attention, even from old Uncle Sam himself who invited me to do a photo shoot with some Apache attack helicopters. I have a similar plan for our RC, but more on that later. For our little KTM, one of the first big decisions we needed to make was which bodywork kit to choose from. Armor Bodies from Woodcraft is my favorite. It installs easy and it holds up extremely well. It's, it's what's on the 848 and it still looks amazing all these years later. And it took me all of 15 minutes to get it mounted the first time. Unfortunately, Armor Bodies doesn't make body work for the RC. Our little KTM, there are only two safe choices, Hot Bodies or Taiga. Hot Bodies is the more affordable option, but also tends to be the fiddliest for installation. Now Taiga, Taiga on the other hand is less well known, but they make the bodywork for the RC Cup bikes. It's a bit more money than the hot bodies, but because I'm making these videos for you guys, I thought I would take a chance. I've always wondered about some of those eBay bodywork kits, largely because aesthetically, I really like how they look compared to the Taiga and the hot bodies that both match the look of the bike and stock trim. I found Pete X Shop who makes this stuff in his garage in Thailand and it looks fantastic in the pictures. And, 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 and we all know that pictures don't lie. If it wasn't true, they wouldn't let you put it on the internet, right? In any case, I reached out to him and he sent me a massive amount of information about how he makes it and the inspiration for the design. So I figured, why not? And before you ask, no, he didn't send it to me for free. I paid full price. However, I did order the Taiga belly pan, which should be compatible because I didn't want to take a chance on the most important part, the catch basin. And I want to make room for possibly adding an exhaust system. Plus, if this handmade bodywork is a catastrophic failure, I'll go back and order the rest of the Taiga kit. A few things we need to be armed with as we get started is patience. A stepped drill bit, lots of rubber gloves, and some more patience. Okay, real quick, I'd like to welcome our newest channel members, Alan, Theranatheran, Marius, and Phoenix. All right, let's do this. And with uh, minimal trimming, looks like the tank cover's on. Let's bolt it up and see how that goes. I suspect this bolt is gonna also have to hold the seat on. So we're just gonna kinda make sure they go in. Only gonna put in three screws because everything's gonna have to come apart. We're not actually fully assembling it. Now I did run to the hardware store and I bought just a whole bunch of hardware, a whole bunch of stainless steel hardware. And I got two different types of nylon washers. These are called finishing washers. And if you can see, they kind of have a bevel into them. 
So that allows for these bevel head screws to kind of go in and sit flush. This helps distribute the stress on the bodywork to a wider area. Now the other kind I actually prefer, these are called shoulder washers. They kind of have a little bit of a chamfer on them. So they, you can make the hole a little bit bigger than the screw and it allowed the bodywork to kind of float. And again, you can still kind of distribute. So we'll be monkeying a lot with these different types of hardware. $60 in random bits of stainless steel and nylon. Contact points there and there. You can see little bits of reinforcement around the bolt holes. Not too bad, all things considered. Ooh, it really needs to come off the front. Is that right? The dimple on the drill mark for this hole was too far forward. So I have to actually move the hole backwards, which kind of totally sucks. I gotta move it back that much. So I'm, I, I can't drill a hole right behind it. I'm probably just gonna try to ovalize the hole a little bit so you see what we can get. Starting to think this entire video will be watch Dave fight with a tail section. Uh, looks like it worked. Fortunately, that's in a place where everybody will see it. All right, we have a tail section. So tank and tail section, we are a third, a third of the way, right on. Yeah. Now a really fun feature of these uh, body panels is on the RC, the battery lives under here. And, and in stock train it was just, you had to take half the bike apart to get in here. But he made this cute little panel and he put three little nuts in here that now you can access the battery with just a couple little quick screws right there. Like how slick is that? This is the Taiga belly pan. This is a really nice, nice piece of bodywork. I mean, you really do kind of get what you pay for when you buy more expensive bodywork. This is, this is really good looking. God, that's it. The belly pan's mounted. That couldn't have been simpler. They came with one replacement bracket for the front and a little spacer there. Belly pans on. Geez, you do get what you pay for sometimes. Everything kind of needs to be opened up a little bit. That isn't even in the same neighborhood. It's comical how far off that one is. Like, it's here. So this is probably mi mixing and maxing bodywork. That's a big gap right there. I may put in a, maybe a well nut or something to kind of hold that tight. 
Otherwise, I think that's kind of a lot of stress to put on that. The well nut will kind of stabilize that. Honestly, this has been going so smoothly, I'm, I'm afraid that this guy is probably where the pain's gonna be. Let, let's see how this goes. Let me show you this. All right, that seems like a lot of pressure to put on that little bit of body work. It's really kind of tight there. I'm not sure if that is going to survive at all. All right, and here's another problem. Uh, this body work obviously wants me to run clip-ons. Uh, there's no way that's gonna work with the stock handlebar height. We're gonna need clip-ons to clear that. So, more money. And there it is. All the body work is now on the bike. And honestly, it went a lot better than I thought it would go. As far as the bespoke artisan handmade Thailand eBay bodywork, it's not bad. Look, I do have some concerns, mostly with how the nose mounts to the side panels with rib nuts. I think rubber well nuts would have been a much safer choice, but we're gonna go with it. I also fear that the paint is gonna get scratched to hell and back every time I need to remove the bodywork. So I'll probably have my buddy Shane clear broad the side fairings, at least where the two panels meet up. I, I will tell you this, by comparison, the Tiger stuff is just outstanding. The, the quality and the ease with which it mounted, seriously, no affiliation, but it's no wonder Taiga has such a great reputation. If I ever had to do it all over again, would I still get the stuff from Pete X Shop? At this point, I don't, I don't know yet. I really do like the look of it better, but I will say that if the Thailand body panels don't hold up, I will absolutely be replacing them with Taiga. Exceptional attention to detail. OEM level quality. Nice job, guys. You deserve the free advertising. Next, I can begin sanding and smoothing and priming and prepping for paint. There are a lot of seams that are going to need some attention, so it's going to take some time and it's still cold as balls. But what color do you think it should be? I mean, I have my idea in my head, but maybe you can sway me. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Ride on and ride well.